The average Australian retires at 65 with a saving of 221,000, including super balance and money saved and invested. If we take the average Australian life expectancy of 83 years old, that is to say, 442,000 needs to support a couple for the next 18 years. Based on the Association of Super Funds of Australia, a couple would need 65,000 per year for a comfortable retirement. This is to say this fund can only support the couple for 6.8 years. Even if we presume the average couple with this amount of money receive a full pension from Centrelink, the money that they have saved throughout their entire careers still cannot cover them for the last four years. It looks very depressing. I have to put out a disclaimer that I didn't mean to use these numbers to scare you, but they did shock me when I was doing research for this video. What does it tell us? It's telling us the super that we have been putting away diligently is clearly not enough to support our retirement. We need to take initiative to plan our retirement as early as possible. We need to be proactive, not reactive to our financial matters. This is why Brendan and I had decided to follow the financial independence FI movement without the RE retirement early part, which I will explain later. On my channel, I had talked about stock analysis, how to save tax, how to boost super balance. Today, I want to share something really personal. Why did we want to pursue FI? Where are we now at the moment? And our plan to reach our FI number in 10 years time. Hope it can give you some inspiration. My name's Irene. Now let's jump right in. Let's talk about super first. Like the numbers mentioned in the beginning, the average Australian doesn't get to accumulate enough super by age of 65 to support the retirement. You may ask, how did that happen? We work hard, we pay our taxes, our employer checked away super guarantee to my super fund every month, and some of us even do salary sacrifices. But how many of us spend a couple of hours per year, a couple of hours researching super funds? How many of us have multiple super funds that have been charged multiple fees? And how often do we review our investment options on our current one, have you played around with the numbers to see how you can pay less taxes on your income? Legally, of course. Most of the time, we just let it roll and let the fees erode our returns. Let's say you've done all the right things, taking advantage of the low income tax rate of super, maximizing the yearly super contributions. Your super balance looks great when you retire by 65. It is great and at the same time, not so great that you can only access it at the government-defined retirement age, and that retirement age can change, and so can the tax rate. The reason the government sets a 15% concessional tax rate for super at the moment is that the government is trying to encourage people to self-sustain their retirement, therefore less financial burdens such as age pension to the government. So when you can retire really depends on the government's call. Also, finally, finally, you can retire by 65. While your kids are in their 30s, you have plenty of time to travel. You finally don't have to do those budget trips, but your energy and body fitness might not as epic as you were in your, say, 40s. So this is how we came up with the sudden realization that we need to build our productive assets. We need to have financial investment outside of super. Even that means that we have to pay a little bit more taxes, which we treat as the price of the ticket of freedom. It doesn't mean that we don't care about super anymore. We still carefully pick and try to maximize the balance. Super definitely provides financial security by the time we retire. The more, the better. But we just don't see super as the vehicle to give us freedom when we are relatively younger. And a little bit background story about how we came to the mindset switch. Brendan and I, we've been good students in school and we've been following the traditional life path. Get a good degree, get a good job, get married, get a mortgage and keep servicing it for another 20 years or so. Humans are herding animals and who do we like to follow? The majority, the powerful and the people close to us. So we get a lot of influences from our parents firsthand from their mindset about money, save and pay your mortgage, investing is a gamble. And in school, there's no financial literacy taught in school, but we may pick up some habits from our peers, like getting paid more and upgrading cars and houses. So in general, it's like we've been hypnotized by our parents, 
society, like consuming is the new black now, right? And financial institutions with the wrong money mindset. Even in 2022 now, you try to talk to your friends or family about the FI concept and some of them who has a fixed mindset will defend it because the concept that you're talking about is so contradictory to what they have been taught or believed in about money. And sometimes they might even get angry because they don't want to admit that they've been fooled all along if they can understand your side. Having the sudden switch of the money mindset made us mindful of how we influence our two young kids. Sometimes it's just, just don't be afraid of questioning the mainstream notions because a lot of the time it's false. A lie told hundreds of times will become a truth, but when you question it, use your critical thinking, back check it with your knowledge, and you're going to continuously fill yourself with new knowledge. Just be open-minded. And this sounds very cliche, but it's extremely important. Be open-minded. FIRE stands for Financial Independence Retire Early, which has a big emphasis on achieving financial independence five, 10, or 20 years earlier than the traditional retirement age. One frequently asked question to people who are pursuing FI is, what is the rush? Why do you want to retire early? You see, being able to work on something that you want to, not you have to, have a big difference. The job that pays the bill may be the one that you're really good at, but may not be something that you really enjoy. Once your investment can pay all your bills, in other words, you reach FI, even if you choose not to retire early, knowing that you have the ability to create and do what you love creates a lot of freedom. Once reaching five, some people may explore any working experience that they didn't have before, like being a barista, go for it, or some people even try a new industry even it doesn't pay you well as you are a beginner. In our case, we've both been workaholics in some way, so when we decided to follow the path, we knew that we we're going to continue to work. On the other hand, don't be judgmental if some people just want to retire early and they just want to spend more time with the family, do a little bit of hobby every day, as long as they keep healthy. What's wrong with that? One thing that we have to know that money has nothing to do with happiness and happiness is when you have no further desires. It is when you're fully content with your current state, but being financially independent does enable you to clear some money obstacles for you to embrace something you truly enjoy. Okay, that's enough of the talk. Where are we now? Let's start with our fine number. To work out your fine number, you use your retirement yearly expenses, which I will use the current yearly expenses that I've been tracking, which is about 50,000. And I set our withdrawal rate 3.5% instead of 4%, which will give us our fine number we need to work on to is 1.43 million. I'm using net worthify calculator to demonstrate here the current annual income is after tax bring home income and annual savings is the one that you dump into the portfolio throughout the year. And currently our saving rate is around 64%. Our portfolio is about 300,000 and I set our annual return after inflation and taxes as 4%. So heat crunch the numbers, it gives us 9.4 years. We follow the core satellite approach and I monitor the market allocation for periodical rebalancing. I share my detail holdings with my patrons. If you're interested to see, you're welcome to join. Now, the global markets are having a big correction at the moment. Can my portfolio provide at least a historical average return around 8% before inflation? Especially, there are a lot of fears going on because of the skyrocketing inflation. US is currently at 8.5%. Australia is about 5.1%. Here's my thought. Of course, if you are retiring soon, you will worry about if you have accumulated enough funds to go ahead as your wealth shrank. But if you're like me, you still have plenty of time ahead. I actually think this is a perfect time to boost your fund. Neither bull nor bear market is going to stay forever. For us, of course, that we want to invest during the bear market and let the market recover in the long run patiently. And when we retire, it's bull, you know, like you buy low and sell high. Even if we take a closer look at the S&P 500 index from May 2020 till now, it still provides 15% annual return before inflation. The ASX 300 index provides about 14%. Yes, we're trying to achieve financial independence as early as possible. 
yes, we are serious. We've got both our, our soft and hard parts of financial independence figured out. We know our fine number. We track our monthly budget. We've done the math. We even run some complex possibility test. We have our post fine lifestyle figured out. We know what passion we're going to pursue and things that we want to learn. And you're mentally prepared, but nothing is permanent. What if the stock market doesn't perform well? right before your retirement year? What if you totally miss the budgeting for an expense which results in a smaller fine number that you needed to achieve? So although that we are determined to reach our fine goal, which is exciting, enjoyable, and fulfilling, try to be open-minded, be flexible. Here's one of the wisdom Chinese philosophy Lao Tzu wrote in Dao De Jing. Men are born soft and supple. Dead, they are stiff and hard. Plants are born tender and pliant. Dead, they are brittle and dry. Thus, whoever is stiff and inflexible is a disciple of death. Whoever is soft and yielding is a disciple of life. The hard and stiff will be broken. The soft and the supple will prevail. It's not the end of the world in the end if you had to work two more years in your mundane day job. Or you can take the conservative approach, building more contingency costs in your yield expenditure and set a lower withdrawal rate so that your fine number is sufficient enough to support your desired post-fire lifestyle. What I'm trying to say is that try not to be tied down to one identity to define who you are so you can become soft and yielding, not brittle and easily to be broken. Be water, my friend.